This is part 13 in the Craftsman 150 Drill Press Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part 12, click the link at the top of the screen. Well, all that hard work of the previous 12 videos is finally paying off. In this video, we're going to be reassembling the drill press. Most likely we won't get the entire drill press rebuilt in this video, so there will probably be a part 14. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. And we've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First up, we're going to be reassembling the motor mount. So we're going to need those two roll pins, the two mount bars, and the mount. We're also going to be installing that snap ring on the quill. So over at device, we'll do the snap ring first. All we're going to do is put the quill in the vise. And notice that I have brass jaws on this vise. So if you don't have brass jaws for your vise, then you're going to want to use a towel or something uh, to keep the quill from getting marred up from the vise jaws. So we're going to be just connecting the two vise grips on the snap ring, just like we did when we took it off. And then we'll pull them apart and lower it onto the quill. And then let it go right into that recess. And then release the vice grips. Done. Easy peasy. All right, next, we're just going to take one of the rods for the motor mount, put it in the vise. And we're going to need a quarter inch punch. And we'll align the motor mount inside that rod. Drop the punch through it so that it stays aligned. And then we'll get our brass tip hammer. And we've got a roll pin. And we're going to use a pair of needle nose to hold that roll pin. And then we're just going to get it started. And once it's started, we'll use a larger punch. This one's probably like a 3 8 And make sure that it's still aligned. And drive it through. So I drive it flush here, but I come back later and get the roll pin to kind of split the difference. They're longer than they need to be. So if you just drive it down till there's about a sixteenth of an inch sticking up, then that would be fine. Then we're going to repeat the same process on this side. And if you want uh, brass vice jaws for your vice uh, McMaster car has them that's where I got these um, Wilton makes some that wrap all the way around but they're kind of permanent once you put them on I like these because I can they've got a set screw on the side you can't see and I can just remove the set screw and then take them off And here I am backing those out a little so that they're splitting the difference. All right, now that we've got that done, we're ready to start assembly. So we start with the base. And 
If you're doing a floor standing one, obviously you're going to have the base on the floor. So we're going to use some super lube grease and we're going to just grease that inside bore. Now we're going to do both sides. So we did the top bore and the bottom bore. And then we've got the base lock shoe and I'm just coating it with super lube as well. These tend to rust over time. It's just a big hunk of cast iron. Alternatively, you can soak it in motor oil for a couple of days and then wipe it down before you install it. And it just goes right in the back side of there. There you go. And we've got that square head screw that we're just going to get started. And then we're going to take the column and make sure that you've got the top part of the column with that milled recess on the inside facing up. And all I'm doing here is I'm filling the bottom of the column. Remember how I said the bottom bore for this is not fit. It does not sit flush with the floor. So the, I'm just making sure it's staying level with the bottom bore and then I'm going to tighten it down. I need a half inch wrench. And there we go. Next, we've got the table. And we're going to go ahead and secure the parts for the table lock. Those are the smaller of the two major locks. And we're going to go ahead and coat the screw part of the table lock. The entire shaft of it with the super loop and then we're going to lube the inside of the bores the top and the bottom one and then we're going to use a board to kind of just hold it off of the base just slide it down on the column. Now, once we got it here, we're going to go ahead and lube the inside of the lock bores. I love this super lube stuff. Frank Lee turned me on to that from Garage Journal. And it's just great stuff. And then we can start inserting the parts of the lock. So you want the handle for your table lock to go on the right side as you're facing the drill press. So the screw end or the lock itself is on the side facing us, the left. And the other piece that is just uh, straight through with no threads is on the other side. And then we stick the lock handle in and lock it down. So if you remember from the disassembly and assembly videos, if you use a 12 inch ruler and you raise the table to about 12 inches, that gives us a pretty good rest for the head when we install it. And we're just going to put a two by four on top of that and then push this whole assembly to the side while we continue working. Next, we're going to be assembling the spindle pulley assembly. So we slide our first bearing on there and then I'm going to use a piece of PVC pipe and knock it on there. It goes on pretty easy. And I've got some PVC dust inside that pipe that's on everything hmm. and then you get the spacer and then the next pulley and we'll just seat that one 
And then we have the snap ring. Now, if you recall from the assembly and disassembly, the snap ring has a top and a bottom. And the part that we want facing up is the squared edge. And I end up looking at it and installing it upside down. So I end up flipping it over. But no big deal. And then once it's on there, make sure that it's holding those bearings in place. Now we've got the head. And we are going to lube all of the openings on the head. And then we've got the inner snap ring that goes inside the spindle pulley bore. And you're just going to need a pair of needle nose pliers to get it to ride inside the channel that it needs to go in. Remember that the inner snap ring acts as a rest for the bottom bearing in the spindle pulley assembly. So now we're ready to install the spindle pulley assembly. And you want to make sure that you've got it really well lined up. Otherwise, you can bend the pulley by beating on it with a mallet. Once you've got it aligned, just give it a couple of smacks. It should drop in there. And remember that you're aligning two bearings with two bore openings. So you got to pass both of them. And then I'm reaching in there and feeling that the bottom bearing is actually sitting on that inner snap ring. So now I'm just going to make sure that it's fully seated. We should have about three quarters of an inch space between the top of the pulley and that ruler. Once we're there, we're going to go ahead and install the two machine screws that go in the sides. And what these do is they hold the entire spindle pulley assembly inside the head. So if you don't have that spindle pulley assembly fully seated, these screws are going to be hitting a bearing instead of sitting on top of the bottom bearing. So once you got both of them in there, you're going to continue to lube the inside bores in the head. And then we're ready to slide the head on the column. So notice I've got that two by four there. And all we're going to do is get it on there, line up the second bore, and then let it sit on the two by four. We're going to go ahead and lube the two bores for the lock. And we want this lock to be opposite the table. So we want the handle for this lock to be on the left side of the drill press as we face it. And then it assembles just like the table did, table lock. All right, now we're just going to level off the drill press head with the top of the column and lock it down. So now that we're done messing with the table and the base, we can go ahead and apply paste wax to the milled surfaces on these. I put the paste wax on the table faces as well as those uh, bosses for the bores that we spent all that time polishing. So I just spread the paste wax on there and then buff it off by hand. And then we're 
going to lower the table and then do the exact same thing to the table. All the bosses and the table surface itself. So right now this is raw metal and if we don't put something on it and you're in a high humidity environment like I am in Georgia it will start to rust really damn fast. So the paste wax protects it. And it's just something that I redo every year or so on my drill presses or as needed. All right. So next we're going to assemble the hub pinion spring assembly. So we're just inserting the pinion into the hub. And if you recall the, uh, well, there's the spring. We're going to stick it in there and line it up. Now, if you recall, the pin that goes in here has splines on one end. And I've already determined which opening has the spline markings. We do not want to drive the splines through it. We want to have the splines facing up in the way that I'm holding it right now. Once you've got it mostly lined up, just tap it until it's flush. Like so. Set that aside. We can go ahead and put the knobs on the feed rods. Feed rods handle rod and here we are lubing up the quill lock and the pinion bores I'm even going to go ahead and lube the inside of the uh, spring tension knob not that it really needs it but it is bare metal so I like putting stuff on bare metal and this head has two uh, bores where the quill ride in down at the bottom older models have a third bore a little higher up but all those need to get lubed and then we'll just insert the hub and we'll go ahead and start the lock screw for the hub. Now remember that has a fiber washer on it as well. And all I'm doing is just starting it. We're not locking down the hub right now. We can go ahead and put the feed handle rods in the hub. to go ahead and assemble the quill and spindle assembly. So these bearings I got from Accurate Bearing, just like the notchy bearings that went inside the spindle pulley assembly. So these bearings are actually made in China, whereas the notchy ones were Japanese. And I'm not a huge fan of Chinese bearings, but Accurate Bearings never done me wrong. And most of the time their bearings are made in Japan but in any case, uh, if you take a bearing, set it on a table, and then just lightly tap with the rubber mallet the spindle, it'll start onto the spindle, and then you should be able to slide it down by hand. And then once it's where it needs to go, we can slide the quill onto the spindle. Notice that the... Uh, snap ring is towards the bottom 
and then we can just give it a couple taps with the mallet and that'll seat that bearing and then we can drop the other bearing on the same method line it up on a flat surface it'll get started on the spindle slide it down then align it with the quill and get it started as best you can by hand and then I just use a piece of uh, pipe to seat it fully whatever you use make sure that you are that whatever the pipe here is engaging the inner race or the outer race and not the shielding on the bearing otherwise you're just going to damage the bearing next we're ready to install the metal washer And then the rubber washer. And then the spindle collar. And one side is convex and the other side is flat. You want the flat side facing the bearing. Now we've got the set screw. Uh, five thirty seconds Allen wrench for that. And we're just going to get it started here. And then we need to apply pressure to the collar so that we're compressing that rubber washer a little. This is my way of preloading the bearings, but there's a whole science to that. This is just how I do it. So next we're ready to install the chuck on the uh, quill spindle assembly. The first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to install the large Allen wrench inside the chuck and we're just making sure the flats of the Allen wrench align with the jaws of the chuck. And then we'll tighten it down. And then we need to clean out the socket in that chuck as well as the taper on the end of the spindle. So we're going to use acetone for that. Acetone and a paper towel and we want it completely clean. And the same with the socket inside the chuck so that those two surfaces mate nicely then we're going to put the chuck in the vise just align the allen wrench and lock it down and then we're going to install the feed stop bracket on the quill because once we mount the chuck we can't install that so it needs to be done beforehand once it's fully seated, we can go ahead and stick the screw, lock washer, and nut on it, but we're not going to tighten it down. And then we're going to just insert the taper inside the socket of the chuck and then start locking down that safety lock collar. And then we'll use our gear rich spanner wrench to lock it in place. And it helps if you are tightening it instead of loosening it. And that's pretty good. Then we can just undo the chuck from the allen wrench and we're good to hook so here we are and i'm sorry it's not in camera but i'm lubing up the quill and the splines on the spindle and we will go ahead and install the rubber quill gasket 
and then we'll insert it into the quill bore like so and just back out the hub so that it's not interfering with the quill or spindle and then you're going to need to take your other hand and spin the spindle pulley assembly until the splines engage with it and then the same with the uh, hub once the uh, teeth on the hub engage or the pinion engage with the quill that will hold the quill inside the drill press so now we can insert the parts for the lock for the quill lock and we want the quill lock handle to be on the left side of the drill press as we face it and we'll lube up the screw for that And we'll tighten it down so that it's engaging. And then we've got the handle for it. And we want the handle in the lock position to be about where I have it now. Like that's locked. So we need the set screw and a 332nd Allen wrench to lock that handle in place. So we'll rotate it without dropping it. Locked. Rotate it to the unlocked position. And that'll give us access to where that set screw needs to go. And this orientation is kind of important because this handle is limited in its travel by the tension knob. So it needs to be fully locked in the down position. Right there. So now I'm just going to get started the lock screw for the tension knob and we're going to align the hub. So we're going to raise the quill all the way to its highest position, pull out on the hub and then rotate it until we get one of those handles at about a 90 degree angle. Now it's fully aligned. And we can lock the quill in place and then we can go ahead and get our proper spacing with the pinion and lock down the pinion lock screw. And that's a half inch wrench. And if you've got the proper felt washer on there, you should be able to lock it down all the way and there should be no hang up. That's normal for the uh, rubber gasket to uh, not stay in the bottom. So now we're ready to install the knob, the tension knob. So I'm just going to get that screw started and we'll loosen the quill. With the quill all the way down, we're going to just rotate that tension knob away from us. And that should start retracting the quill. And then we can tighten it down. And then we'll check the retention. That's about what we want right there. So now we're ready to assemble the quick adjustment lock for the feed stop and spring sorry again it's not fully in camera but if you've watched the disassembly then you know how it goes and then we'll install the
feed stop rod with the scale facing us. And then we've got the nut that goes on the end of that. And we have not tightened down the, uh, the feed stop bracket, so of course it's going to fall here. like that so that's fine just go ahead and push it back up onto the quill and then align all of that so that the uh, loosen your lock and then make sure that the feed stop rod is riding in those uh, fingers on the head and not dragging on it. It should all travel nice and smooth. And then we'll lock the bracket in place. Then we'll install the feed stop collar and make sure everything's moving smoothly. And that's gonna wrap up part 13. We've gone long enough already. So part 14 coming soon where we will finish this project I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And uh, I appreciate all the support. And I will see you next time.